Teams who counter-attack well can catch the opposition on the back foot, maximising an opportunity to attack while their opponents are less organised, overcommitted forwards or lacking shape. While various statistical aggregators don't share their definitions, we can look at counter-attacks or fast breaks as being largely the same thing, regardless, taking the same data set for Premier League teams, we are comparing like with like. Last season, Chelsea scored the most goals on the counter, seven in total. It's perhaps not a surprise that with N'Golo Kante added to their ranks, and the deeper-lying creativity of Cesc Fabregas, plus the pace of Eden Hazard and Pedro, Chelsea were good at winning the ball back and countering. Having said that, Chelsea's large overall goal tally, second only to Spurs, meant that their percentage of goals from counters was not the highest. That position belonged to Middlesbrough, often and rightly derided for their lack of quality going forwards. Five teams failed to score on the counter at all, and it's worth noting, of the seven lowest scoring teams in the league overall, four failed to score a single counter-attacking goal. The average Premier League team took 486.7 shots in total last season and an average of 7.3 shots from a counter-attack, an average of 1.5% of their shots. Over four teams took more than 10 shots on the break. Chelsea had 18, Leicester City had 17, Hull City 14 and Manchester City 12. What's remarkable about these low totals is how productive shots on the counter are. The top five teams for shots on the counter resulting in goals managed between 60% and 38.9% conversion of their shots from counter-attacks. Indeed, nine teams managed to score with 25% or more of their counter-attacks. When comparing the effectiveness of shots on the counter to shots generally, it's clear that the conversion rate of shots taken on the counter is massively higher. Here are the top five teams for counter-attacking shots, resulting in goals with their non-counter-attacking conversion rates as well. The disparity is clear. It's worth pointing out that only one side failed to make a single counter-attack all season, Stoke only made one, and Watford three. Given the clear effectiveness of counter-attacking, it seems bizarre that teams would not try to manufacture and exploit this method of attacking more often. Two further things stand out. The vaunted counter-press of Liverpool appears not to have yielded many counter-attacking chances or goals, and Leicester, who won the league in 2015-16 with a lethal counter-attack, tried the same approach again, suggesting that a combination of defensive deficiencies and shot conversion caused their overall issues, rather than suddenly abandoning what had been a successful method of attacking previously. Counter-attacks work by creating chances that produce higher shot conversion rates, certainly due to a lack of defensive cover and the fact that the attacker finds more space and can control the location and timing of their shot. The fact that some teams fail to counter-attack at all seems odd, given how productive they are. Perhaps Maurizio Pellegrino will address this at Southampton. It would certainly make sense if he did. <laughs>